Hello, I'd like to give you an introduction to Unity Serializer, free save game asset. This is version 2.2, and this version has a lot of features like uploading to servers and those kind of things. So we're going to start off uh, with a very straightforward serializing, saving the game for Angry Bots in under two minutes. So what we'll just do is go and find the package to import. So uh, I've got one with an extra little bit for this demo so we'll just go and find that here we go and you'll see that when we come to part two and i show you some of the advanced server features of unity serializer version 2. so we'll compile those scripts then when we've done that we can add the unity serializer wizard we'll just dot that over here and we'll click to create a new save game manager and that manages identifiers for everything in the scene. Then what we need to do is save everything that moves, is changed, has scripts on it with data that we need to save. In this case, we're just going to save all of the enemies, all of the dynamic environment, all of the semi-static environment, and then the player. And then what we need to do is find our pause menu, which will give us a menu so that we can actually test out the saving and loading. It's not really supposed to be a final one, but it will do for this purpose. And then we can run the game. Let's delete any save games we've already got. And then off we go. We'll run around here. We'll activate some of these spiders. And we'll save it like that. Then we'll unpause, uh, go over here, open this door. Pause it there, maybe. Save it. And then we'll run into this room over here. And activate this one and save it. And finally, let's run up here. And go over to this corridor down here. And save it there. So having done that, we can load back any of those positions just by clicking on it. So here we were at the start, and then we've got uh, in that second room. And then finally we've got in front of the, the big mech. So that's it, save game, loaded saved all working perfect okay so let's have a look now having seen that and how easy that was uh, how we can use some of the new server features of unity serializer okay so what we're going to do for this is we're going to take uh, the spider enemies and we're going to add a script that when we click on them with a the mouse they will be destroyed but first they'll be saved off into a json file and put on the server so uh, in order to do that we are actually going to create spiders at runtime now, so we'll turn them into a prefab identifier. And then I've written a little script called click me and die. And we're going to attach that to one of these spiders and update the prefab. And we'll have a look at that click me and die script right now. Okay, so what this does is it allocates a unique identifier to each spider, so we've got a unique file name and then it's going to wait for the user, the player, to click the mouse button. Then it's going to cast array to see if we've hit the spider. If we have, it's going to save that spider to an FTP site with a particular file name, test spider, its ID plus JSON. And then if that's no error, the error comes back null, we're going to then reload that from the server uh, using HTTP in two seconds time and we're always going to destroy the game object when it's clicked. So if we run that, and let's have a play with that to see how that works to start with. We'll go over here and we'll just click on uh, this spider. So he's vanished, gone off to the server, and in a moment he'll come back again. There he is. He's kind of working okay. Hit both of them up there. And there's that one. 
And there's the other one. So, it kind of works, but it's not perfect. So this guy over here doesn't really work properly. So we're going to kill this thing. And then go over here and activate this spider. Click him and then stand back over here. And as you can see, he's not really come back. And if we wander over here a bit, oh, there he is suddenly. Now that's occurring because of some of the code that happens when that uh, spider animation starts up. So this is one of those places where you need to start thinking about what you actually want to do during the saving and loading. So if we go and look at actually the disable outside radius function, which is what I really meant to look at, we can see that the first thing it does when it awakes the object is it immediately disables it. And that is what's happening when we reload it. Um, so we really don't want this to happen if the game's loading. We only want that to happen if it's a normal awake. So what we're going to do to disable that is we're just going to type if serialization helper dot is deserializing uh, and this game object. Uh, we're going to do that if it's not deserializing this game object. So we'll save that. Then we'll go over here and we'll shoot our little buzzer. I hate these things. And then we'll go and activate our enemy now and click on him and then get out of his range. And sure enough, he comes back and he's active now because we haven't done the strange code to move him around the place. So that appears to be working. So there we go. We've now got a lot of things being saved and loaded. But we still might have some private variables that we really wanted to uh, to load back. Sometimes that can be kind of handy. Uh, so we'll just have a quick look at how we might actually then save some of those private variables inside some of these scripts. And uh, yeah, this is a bit crazy. And then we'll have a quick look at the JSON produced by these these scripts. Mm, that seems to be fine actually. It's kind of a bit mad. So let's go and have a look at that spider AI a second. So let's go for spider return move controller. And uh, this has some private variables. Um, it's setting them up in awake by the look of things, most of those things, so that seems fine. Uh, we probably don't have any problem saving any of those because of that awake call to get them. So we can go and have a look at the spider attack. move controller and yeah, lots of private variables in here things to do with being in range and this one looks to me like uh, we'd probably be quite wise to think about actually uh, trying to save some of these things so we've got two ways of doing that we can either go to the ones we decide we want to save and put an at serialize this in front of them or we can just go and say, I want every private variable on this script to be saved by doing at script serialize all. So if we add that, we're just going to make sure that everything is now saved. So we'll do that, and then you'll see a bunch more things in this JSON when we get there. So we'll go and have a look at that. So we'll go and click uh, some of these spiders. Click him. Click him. Hopefully, I'll come back in a second. And we'll go and look at that JSON code that got produced there. So I'll go to a web browser and have a look at spider0.json. And this is the kind of structure of the JSON format. The compressed binary format is much smaller than this, uh, but it's not human readable. You have to pretty much read it back inside the game. So it would work fine for what we're doing there, but not if you wanted to go and modify things. And you can see actually in here, when we're saving, like uh, this is a transform it's saving, you can see that it's still embedded JSON, escaped embedded JSON in there, so you can go and modify things quite easily, like rotations and stuff like that. You can actually get to all of that data and, uh, and modify it using some other kind of server script if you want to. 
Okay, that's been a, a quick overview of the auto upload, download server features. You need to see all other two also saves to files. It will save, as you can see, complicated sets of things, your own classes, complex collections, all of that kind of thing. Uh, I hope you find it useful. And uh, if you get any problems, feel free to drop me a line on the support forum or by any other means. Thank you very much for watching.